Hi, how are you, man? Hey, we're great, and we're so excited because, well, first of all, we got the news that there's this big uh, Hearts and Boots Festival, which is coming up in uh, August up in this area, and then we find out you're going to be performing there with your band uh, Modern West. Yeah, it was a it was a really nice nice invitation, and it was one that didn't take us very long to say yes to. It was a uh, it, playing in Canada has been really a lot of fun for us, and I think probably the first place that really has kind of really received us. And so whenever we get a chance to scoot across the border, we do. Yeah, we love having you up here. It's a real uh, a treat to have you. For those who are unfamiliar with Kevin's musical endeavors, uh, was that the next uh, step in the creative evolution for you, Kevin? Did you did you feel the need to do this? I mean, you've always loved music, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess there's a need. I, I can't always explain. It wasn't a, a um, kind of a plan thing. I really just simply wanted to play music wherever I found myself. Um, you know, making a movie somewhere for three months and somehow, you know, integrating myself into the community. If I go somewhere for four or five days, you know, on a golf tournament or a, whatever it is, I mean, I don't, not that I do that that often. I like being a part of the, the situation and, and, uh, you know, being on stage for two hours versus, um, you know, just signing autographs or, you know, shaking hands is just so much, it's so much more fun to be a part of the party than this kind of little kind of thing over in the corner that's going on and standing in front of people whose camera will not work. <laughs> Are you, are, it always seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Whenever I go to take a picture of someone, yeah, it never works. Uh, and you hand your and you hand the family to some family member who doesn't know how your phone works either. And the next thing you know, you're, you're there for two minutes. And if you do that times a hundred, um, that's a long time. You can easily see what happens, you know. Um, so playing music was just really something I wanted to do without a grand plan. And six and a half years later, it's taken us around the world, and, and uh, it's been really a, an interesting thing. I continue to make movies, continue to uh, direct, want to direct. And so, um, you, know, it's, I, you know, I don't know what involvement is. I think you just kind of one step in front of the other, and you, if you're lucky enough to be able to do what you love, then you should consider yourself pretty lucky. Is, is it more of an issue for people to separate themselves from Kevin Costner, the actor, uh, as opposed to you separating yourself and putting a different hat on. Do you find it, people find it harder for them to accept you as a mu- musician? I don't think, well, I think people take the news early on with a big, large curiosity, oh, really, and, and then they can have their own opinion about it. It can be like, oh, whatever the moan is, or, or like some people are so kind of up, like, great, I'd love to hear this. But I don't worry about it. I, I think the music has to take care of itself because that's the, that that's the hurdle that's the bar that everybody has to get over you know people listening to music can turn right around and go somewhere else and you know when music doesn't speak to me out loud that's what i do too and we're going to look out there and i and i plan on having a good time with the people that are in front of me well if you're just joining us yes it is kevin costner speaking with us on the phone and uh he's uh been tapped to perform at the boots and hearts festival august 10th through the 12th uh you've got to be fans of some of the people that are performing you mentioned some of the big names uh, carrie underwood's going to be there tim mcgraw uh any chance that you get a, an opportunity to get on stage with some of those people well kind of take my time i don't i don't need to i don't need to come up and do a song with them i really i i, I turn into the audience when they're when they're playing you know i want to i want to see them from the side and um you know i know them a little bit i don't pretend to to you know to to know them or, or be friends we've just always been friendly with each other and so the relationship grows we bump into each other on the road in these different venues and so um, no, I don't. I don't think to jump on stage. It's not something I really want to do. It's. Uh, I like playing our songs, and when I'm done, I like watching people play theirs. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about any future projects you may have? I know that you're working on some some stuff for the History Channel. Is there a chance to use some of your music in those projects? Yeah. Well, in fact, we scored um, the the making of Hatfield and McCoys, the behind the scenes, and we scored. A documentary about the Hatfield and McCoys, and out of that, some music was rolled into the movie itself. And because I got so kind of involved in this American feud, I uh, ended up um, writing um, a concept album with my band called Famous for Killing Each Other. And it's just a combination of lyrical songs and ambient music, and it's really cool. Uh, and I hope that uh, people who catch the, the miniseries down here called Hatfield and McCoys. I hope they kind of really look up the um, the record "Famous for Killing Each Other" because it's uh, really proud of that. I feel really good about what it is, and uh, we might go ahead and throw a couple of those songs out in front of the 
uh, in front of the, the crowd. And are you writing songs uh, yourself? How, how involved are you in the actual process of putting something together? Well, I wrote about four, about five or six of the songs in Famous for Killing Each Other started them, and sometimes I open the songs up to my bandmates. Um, I write I write a lot. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself the best writer in our group, uh, you know, and because a lot of my songs just don't make it. They're just not good enough. When I finish each one of them, I always think, oh, this is a pretty good one. And then I kind of, the longer I listen, I go, this is not very good at all. And so the truth is what I do in the band is I decide what we will play. And essentially, I break all the ties. If, if, uh, if it's my song and it's not good enough, it doesn't make it. If it's somebody else, the song, and it, I don't try to balance the scales when it comes to music. It's the cream gets to the top, and that's kind of how I try to operate. Kevin Costner, thank you for joining us. You've done baseball movies, golf movies. Is there any chance of a hockey movie? No chance. <laughs> no, there's no chance. I mean... And I say that respectfully because I, I feel like I missed out on a kid not being raised in the snow. I mean, it looks like one of the greatest backyard brawl things that you could really have fun with. I mean, when I look at that and thinking of guys saying, hey, man, it's iced up. Let's go on the back pond. Let's go do this, go do this. I never really learned how to skate. And I think when you do a sports movie, something as sacred as hockey, you better know how to skate because – Anybody that, that skates goes, well, they, they would hate a movie with somebody that, you know, is faking it. And so I, I, I respect the sport of hockey too much to kind of go, well, I'm a good actor. I can act like I can skate. And that's, you know what, that ain't right. <laughs> even, a, even a guy who can't play hockey can yeah. tell who can. That's right. Yeah, you got it right on the money. Well, listen, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, doing this. We appreciate it. We'll look forward to seeing you August 10th through the 12th. One of those days you will be there. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jerry.